sign a small sugar lump emerger. Now this is a P160 size 14. Now the shank length is equivalent to a size 16. It's just got the gate length, the gate width of a size 14. It's a nice wee hook. It's one of the, one of my favourite hooks. The thread I'm going to be using is a white UTC, and this is a 70. Now it's quite a very it's a simple fly to tie. So easy. Now I'm going to start at the eye of the hook and run it run the thread down and until if I let the bobbin go it's in line with the point and then remove the excess. Now the sugar lump buzzer you're looking for this is ether foam I've cut. I buy the ether foam blocks from vineyards and then I cut it with a, with a knife and I get this. This is basically four mil square. Now to tie it in what I like to do is I like to break it. Now if you break it it gives you a taper. See the taper there? Now to tie it on what I do is I take the thread up to the, the centre. Now this is where you can slightly change the fly. Where it depends on where you put the lump, the sugar lump as we call it. Whether you put it really up close to the eye, basically the near the thorax area, middle of the thorax. You can tie it in the middle, so you can. Uh, there's lots of ways of actually getting what you're actually doing is positioning the material in a point where the hook's going to sit at a certain level. Some nymphs are a bit higher in the water, some are a bit deeper like midge and so on. But in this case I'm putting it halfway, much like I would do a clink camera or so, an emerging caddis, I would have it bound a bit there. Simply, the tapered end, when I've, when I've tore it, I tie this in here, and just simply catch it here with your fingers, with your tips here, your nails, and then tie it down. And then, basically, I'm going to bring the thread round the, the root, much like you do if you're going to stack a wing, just bring it up. Now when you take away, you don't need all that, so take some of it away out of the way. Leave you some, plenty of room that you can hold it. And then I'm just going to simply take the thread round the bend. Now I'm not all the way around, before I do that what I'll do, I've got a sharpie pen here. It's a black sharpie pen. And I'm going to mark round about maybe 4mm from the area where the threads onto the hook. This is going to be my rib. I take this down. And there's the first turn of black. Then we do another one. And then I'm going to rib the fly. It gives a small quill effect all the way up to the thorax, which is there. You see it's a small midge type pattern. And then I'm going to take the thread up a wee bit just to finish that off. So I'm back onto the white area. Now, this is here, this this is just some squirrel dubbing. Just a natural squirrel dubbing. I'm going to open the thread out, and I'm just going to anti-clockwise spin the bobbin. Which will happen, this will take the twists out of the thread. And then, just get your cellar, your dubbing needle. And then, split the thread. And you need a nice clean needle to do this. Run it down. It open. Just make sure you've got enough dubbing. Always best if it that you've got plenty of dubbing. You don't while you're doing this. Now I just place it into the, in between the threads, split thread. Don't be shy. Looking for around about say an inch or so of material, and then just let it go, and then spin your bobbin clockwise, which will tighten it up. You'll see it's starting to spin, nice and tight. Now I start off with a turn at the back, and then you're looking for around about maybe three or four turns underneath, just like a parachute around the base of the foam, and then come to the front, just wind it like a dubbin. And there we are. Now what I'm going to do, make sure the thread's nice and waxed, Put the wax on the side of my finger here, and then come up and quite finish. A rough type fly, 
but it works extremely well. This is a great pattern, especially for any canis coming off. Now, what I'm going to do now is come in and trim underneath, trim the material underneath. So it's sitting a wee bit flatter. Maybe you've got basically a kind of like a parachute type hackle using the dubbin. It sits very nice on the water, it gives a good impression, and that's what you're looking for. Now when I'm fishing this fly, what I'll do is I'll use my floatant, put it, make sure it's into the dubbin and onto the the actual the foam itself. It's important that you put it onto the foam. Now you could practically keep it that length the foam until you go to use it. If it's a rough day, you'll get away with that length. The fish will still take it, then it'll act as a better sighter for you. But as the day, as it calms down, basically you have to reduce the length of the foam. Now, about half of that at least. So you just come in, trim half of it away. And that there would probably be around about the, the average length I would have on the actual, on the fly itself. And you see you get your parachute type effect you've got using the dubbing because you split the thread. At the same time, you have a nice thorax. You could take a wee bit more off of that, make it a wee bit flatter, which I'm going to do. Now, because I've waxed the thread, you don't. You could get away with not varnishing it, but if you want, you can put a wee drop of varnish into the head. I hope you enjoyed that. In a small merger pattern, or sugar lump and merger. I certainly fill your box with them, all colours. This is just a basic black and white, good wee quill type body colour that works well.